Uh, my name's Andy Gregson, I'm the founder of FabLab London. Uh, Fab Labs are a concept that came out of MIT in about 2001. There's 600 worldwide uh, in every country apart from Antarctica. We're just one of many in London. Uh, it's a place to prototype products using digital fabrication. So think of it as a Tony Stark's workshop on steroids. So we've got 3D printers, laser cutters, electronics, workshop, tool shop, etc. And a creative workspace for kids to come to learn to, and to fa learn about the new technology that are changing the whole kind of product manufacturing industry um, from the kind of ground up. I noticed I went to visit um, a D&T school's place about five years ago and they had a massive 3D printer and they used to do things using kits which was the only cost effective way they could do things for example they'd have the solder in place and they'd just the kids would come in to do the same it was a random yeah. generated dice sort of yeah, thing yeah. and I always thought that was a sort of fairly boring and uh, linear way of doing things it seems to me that the fab lab or the 3D printing uh, industry is sort of coming in. It's one of those things that's come in in the last couple of years and is changing the way possibly that people can uh, do their practice. It, can, it leads to more diversity, it seems to me. Yeah. What you'll find is that a lot of the patents that are kind of core to 3D printing technology have recently expired, which is why you're seeing a massive boom in the use of 3D printed technologies in the high street, ranging from £250 for an XYZ printer right up to four or five thousand pounds for an SLS, which is a kind of nylon-based or kind of carbon-based printer. These printers are available to buy, to put in your home, but a lot of, what you'll find a lot of kids tend to print a lot of robots, so robot after robot after robot. But the, the wonderful thing for me about 3D printing is if, if you combine it with electronics, combine it with laser cutters and combine it with traditional tooling, it makes a really interesting uh, realm of possibilities for kids to make almost any particular object or you know, product. Uh, the kits you, you referred to earlier, they still exist. Uh, they're always going to be there because it's obviously to, to, to teach kids the basics of electronics, you need that kind of plug and play approach for classrooms. If the things goes wrong, the teacher can't fix it. And that's one of the biggest challenges is it how do you skill teachers to the point where they understand the kits they're receiving. So if they do go wrong, they can root, fix and do root cause analysis. Uh, it's a challenge. We don't know what the answer is yet, but what we do find in the lab, we, we tend to give opportunities for teachers to come and use the space. We teach them the basics of the Arduino, the Pi, the Spark, all these kind of micro controllers they'll see in, in, in schools. And at least they can go back to the classroom and c convey that knowledge to the kids, who are usually three steps ahead of the teachers anyway, but at least got the confidence to, to work out, ah, it could be this, or it could be that, etc. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.